What's up everybody? It's Chris Taylor, your middle class man. In today's episode, we are talking about buying used stuff. Now today we're going to be talking about buying used stuff and things that you always need to buy used and also things that you always need to buy new. Hey, also subscribe to this channel and like this episode, maybe even share it with another friend of yours. So let's start with this. These are a couple things that you absolutely need to buy new. Number one, a bed mattress. Listen, let's just be honest. Don't ever buy a used mattress, okay? You don't know what goes on with that mattress. You don't know where that thing has been. You don't want those germs. You talk about going out in public and getting COVID. Do you want to get those germs that have been in that old mattress? No. Come on. Make sure you buy that brand new mattress. And depending on what type of problems you have, maybe back problems and things like that, that's going to steer you in the direction of buying a good mattress. Just think, normally seven to eight hours a day you spend on that mattress. Sometimes more if you just like to lay around. But you need to make sure that your mattress is brand new when you buy it and fit for your personal health. Number two, what we need to buy new is underwear. <laughs> Okay, we totally understand where this is going. Okay, so you're here. Let's talk about the used stuff. What are some things that you use every single day that is okay to buy used? Electronics. Come on. We go out and spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on phones, on TVs, on iPads, on different types of electronics that are totally losing their value as soon as we buy them. So one of the things that I believe, one of the things that's great about Facebook Marketplace, about Craigslist that's kind of dying, but even friends and family that have older electronics or maybe they're upgrading to newer stuff is that we can buy those things at a discount, at a huge discount. One of the places I worked at as a teenager was a pawn shop and pawn shops get a bad rap. They're always talking about how pawn shops take stolen stuff and actually that's not the case. If you want the long of it, pawn shops actually have to submit everything to the police department and those police records get looked over, the serial numbers get looked over, the model numbers, and if those things are reported stolen, the police will come to that pawn shop and actually confiscate those things and put it in trial and get those things back to the original owner. But a lot of times, people use pawn shops to borrow money, and so they'll take those things to pawn shops, pawn it, get some cash, maybe even move on from that product uh, getting a, getting something new or maybe even losing that product because of some type of economic failure on their personal part. But the pawn shops are there and they have those electronics. They are great items that you can use, that you can use to push forward your life, things that you can use for your home, things that you can enjoy. Pawn shops have those things. You can find whatever you need. Here's an example of an electronic that I've purchased recently that I use every single day, a MacBook Pro, 2018 model, 15 inch with the touch bar, 512 SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and absolutely perfect for what I do every single day in my business. It even helps me edit this video that you're watching now. Brand new if you were to purchase that MacBook Pro would cost you nearly $3,000. Now, when I was scrolling across Facebook Marketplace, there was definitely no $3,500 price tag on it or I wouldn't have bought it. I found it online for $800. I messaged him and he was actually in some financial trouble and he needed some money right then to pay rent. Well, I had $800 that was able to buy that computer. I actually sold my old MacBook for $700. So I really upgraded from a 2015, which was my old one, to a 2018 for a hundred bucks. There's no way you could do that if you were to buy new. Like I said, it's $3,000 new, but I got a deal because I was willing to buy something used. Let me tell you, buying something used can help you save more, it can help you spend more in certain areas that you need to, and it can help you get out of debt if you're, if you're in debt. Here's another thing that you can buy used and this one might be a little controversial. Number two, clothing. 
Now you may be thinking to yourself, there is no way I'm buying something used and putting it on my body. So here's the thing. So you can buy top name brand fashion for a lower cost. There are tons of websites out there. You can even look on, again, we go back to Facebook Marketplace. You can look on there. eBay, eBay's a great place for fashion that's that's used. You can look at Poshmark. Poshmark's a one that's up and coming and that's been growing every, every year. And a lot of things get put on there. But those are places that you can buy used items for a lot less money and can look just as good as anybody else. Now, I would probably say there was one item that you could probably buy new, and that's a suit. And the reason why I say a suit is because there's specifications in a suit for different body types. Not everybody looks the same. Everybody has different heights, different weights, different sizes. We're all built differently. That's what makes us great. So you have to have those things tailored, and a lot of suits that you find used are already tailored and may not fit correctly. Number three, and maybe the most important for the middle class, a car. Depending on the type of transportation you use, whether it's a car, an SUV, a motorcycle. If you buy a Humvee, I don't care. Whatever type of transportation you use, don't buy new. Do you understand how much money you are losing when you drive off that car lot? In the first two years, you lose a huge chunk of that car's worth. Almost everybody is upside down by the time two years have passed. And so you've got 24 months that you're upside down in that vehicle. Upside down meaning that you cannot take that car back and sell it for what it's worth. That means you have a car that you owe money on that is not worth the money that you owe on. That means you're upside down in that vehicle. So one of the things that I tell everybody is buy used cars. You can find great cars that are used. Listen, let me be totally transparent. I'm gonna post a picture up of my car, my daily driver right now. This thing is a 2011 Toyota Camry that I bought from a friend. Listen, my everyday driver is a car that cost $1,200. You wanna know how many miles is on it? 280,000 miles. That's a lot of dang miles. But let me tell you this, that thing gets 30 miles per gallon and it will go anywhere I need it to. Now I also have some other vehicles that I use for business, but I've also bought those cars used. I've never in my personal life bought a brand new car. And I think it's totally ridiculous if you want to go out and buy a new car and think that you're doing the right financial thing. One of the things that you got to think about when you're buying a used vehicle is also if you're paying cash for it or if you're financing it. Now, I'm totally cool with you financing it as long as it is a good interest rate. I think you really need to stay at the 7% mark if you're financing that car. If it's anything over that, then you're probably getting a little bit out of hand because you're going to be paying too much interest on that car. The best possible thing you can do buying used is paying cash. You're free and clear. You don't have any payments. You own that car free and clear. And if you need to sell that car, you have the title and you can sell it today. There's no waiting. There's no banks to deal with. And if you get in a financial position where you need some money quick, you can sell that car. Downsize or if you're ready to to move on and get something a little bit better, you can trade it in and it'd be a quick process that you don't have to worry about. A couple of things to think about when you recap on buying a used car. Number one, what's the price of the car? Can you really afford that monthly payment? Number two, if you can pay cash for it, pay cash for it. That means you're ready to go and you don't have to worry about a bank. You don't have to worry about anything. You've got the title in hand and you have something to sell in the future if you need to or if you get into a financial hardship. Number three, make sure that that is a dependable vehicle. Do your research. There are mechanics that you have as friends that will go with you or that you can bring that car and test drive and get them to check that out. Google can tell you a ton of things. Mechanics can tell you even more because their hands have been on those, those cars. So get with your mechanic, get with those friends that you have that are mechanics and let them know that what you're going to buy and let them check it out. Okay, ladies, I'm going to go here. Another thing that you can buy used. Guys, listen to me, all right? The girls won't know. Well, they may find out, but here's the thing. I go back to that pawn shop mentality again. 
I used to work there and we'd have a lot of items that come in. So another thing that you can buy used, jewelry. You don't have to go to Jared's. Jared's is extremely overpriced. Do you understand how much they pump up those prices at Jared's? Okay, Jared's jewelry is no better than anybody else's. Just because they have good commercials, that's it. That's the only thing they do. But you can get something custom made. You can get something that's perfect for your loved one at a lower cost cost and buy it used. So let me tell you this, one of the first rings I bought for my wife when we were dating was a used ring. She wanted this specific type of ring that she had saw and I actually found that ring at a pawn shop. We're back to the pawn shop talk again. It wasn't the right size so I sent it off to one of the jewelry repairmen in town and he fixed it up perfect, just like it was brand new. He shined it up, buffed it, white gold and diamonds, looked amazing. There is no way you could have told anybody that that was a used ring. To the naked eye, it was a brand new ring. That ring still had the same value as it did if it was brand new, but I got it at a used price and I got something that was worth a whole lot more for what I paid for it versus what I would have if I went and bought new. Now here's one thing when you're buying jewelry, you need to make sure it is real. There is a lot of fake jewelry out there. I worked in the pawn shops. We did the scrapes on the gold. We told a lot of people that their gold was fake, that their diamonds were cubic zirconia, that they were fake and it broke people's hearts. But you need to make sure you do your own research and have those things in place and buy from reputable people if you're gonna buy used jewelry. I think it's an amazing idea to buy used jewelry, but you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you know what you're buying so you don't get duped. To finish this off, let's talk about a couple things. One is what you know. I know a lot about electronics, maybe because I'm Asian. I'm just born with it. Maybe you know a lot about mechanics. I have no idea about how a car works and what the inner workings of a car is. I trust that information to my friends that are mechanics. I trust that information for other things to other people. So listen, things that you are good at, so things that you know you can say, hey, even if it's broken, I know how to fix that. And how much is it gonna cost me to fix that? You can work that into the price, you can make an offer, and then, hey, you've got something that you've saved a ton of money on that you know exactly what to do if it breaks or if it's got something that Maybe it's gone wrong with it. So focus on what you're good at, things that you don't know, ask somebody. People are willing to give information for free. Just think about Google, think about YouTube. There's a ton of information out there that's free to get, things that you can learn. Ask those people, take that extra time, do your own research, and go out there and save you some money the next time you buy something you. So again, my name's Chris Taylor, this is Middle Class Man. Thanks for tuning in, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and share this with a friend. Love you, peace out.